got the boat pumped up and ready for action. We're gonna launch out here onto Morro Bay. Uh, conditions are fair right now. Hopefully there won't be too much wind. We're gonna ride the tide as it's coming in. It's gonna peak at about 3.30, and then we're gonna ride the tide as it's going out. We'll come right back here again. Uh, hopefully that's the way it's gonna work. We'll see, hopefully the wind doesn't upset my little plan too much. Yeah, I get it. Let's put the boat in. No, no, just have to stop it in there. I'm gonna keep it from going away while you get in it. Okay. Now I can hold the boat while you get in it. Okay, perfect. Good, good, good. I'll hold it steady for you, buddy. Okay. baby. They're bravely going out into the current. What time is it? Let's see. Let's check the time. Time is 12.15. Now that's a long time before the current comes in. Current's full because you said it peaked at 3:30, right? Oh, look at that! Oh, look at that beautiful bird just went by. <laughs> We're moving right along with the tide here. This is great. It's just fucking great. I think I'll take us a little further out here, past this pirate ship. Get us out in the current a little more. Wishing I brought gloves, because if it gets bad and we have to paddle against the wind, we'll definitely wind up with blisters.
if it got really bad and like the wind turned against us and the tide was against us, we could always just beach it and walk home, you know, walk to the car. Yeah. I wonder what that lady that's living out in the boat's doing like is she is she like working right now? Is she sleeping on the boat? Oh, which boat was it? I don't know, I think it was that one down there somewhere. It's pretty big. I bet she's having a ball working. I mean, it's hard work, you know, to fix up a boat. It's a lot of work and it's hard and you got to be self-disciplined, you know. you got to stick to it. But, uh, I mean, hell, couldn't ask for a better office. You know, you're out here at one with nature, you know, it's pretty cool. And then at the end of it, you wind up with a really valuable sailboat that you can sell for a lot of money. Looks like there's a lot of people doing that out here. They buy these old rusty tubs and then they fix them all up. Yeah, that'd be really cool, wouldn't it? terrifying um i don't i don't like the idea of going to sea anymore i mean if i had to i'd rather be on one of those than a motorboat or a big cruise ship or something but uh being on that fishing boat scared the hell out of me i didn't mind going to, like on greece going from athens to crete like that wasn't so bad it was like uh you know you feel safe, you know, on this big ship. But man, that little fishing boat out there on rough seas. Tide is high, you can see on that, like remember before you could see the bottom of the steps? Now you can't. Because we were here at low tide last time. I love this little kayak. You know, I, they're so great. I mean, when they're working like they do, like they are right now, you don't even get wet. I mean, <laughs> I expected I'd at least be soaking wet, you know, in one of these. I'm out in a place like this, out in nature, I'm always reminded of how connected we are with it all, you know, how, uh, how huge the universe is and, and what a small part of it we are. And, uh, and by being a small part of the universe, it's like we're, we're a mechanism by which the universe may view itself, uh, which is just an incredible phenomenon. 
just amazes me. Okay, we're in uh, really shallow water right now, so uh, we're going to fight the wind here and try to get out into some deeper water. Uh, we don't want to get grounded. So, most of this bay is not very deep. In fact, uh, a lot of it is just pretty much muddy, swampish areas, you know. So when the tide is in like this, you can paddle around quite a bit and you don't see the shallow spots. But there's very definite channels where there's deeper water where the main flow of the tide is. So we've never paddled out to the sand spit this way before. Uh, we've done it where it's real narrow at near the opening. Uh, and I know you have to stay on that kind of narrow channel in order to get to the other side. Problem is, I don't know where that narrow channel is. So we're gonna follow these other kayakers that we saw and uh, they're going out across and I'm pretty sure they know the way and they're, they're paddling through that little channel. So we're following them. All of them, right? Yeah. See if I can zoom in on them. A lot of guys spend a lot of money. They get these big fancy boats with motors that, you know, they cost a lot. You gotta insure them. Uh, but me, I just prefer to have a nice little kayak that, that operates on human power, you know? I don't need a big fancy boat, you know, burn all that gas. I'm much more ecologically conscious than those guys. So that's why I have a little kayak, a two-man kayak. We're getting closer to the sands a bit now, preparing for a landing here. There's a lot of people out here today, and uh, it's taking quite a bit of rowing. It's a pretty good little jaunt to get out here. Uh, I thought it would be a little easier than this, but you gotta be persistent and just keep paddling if you wanna make it out here. This is, uh, if you look in front of us here, you can see the, where we're going to land. Get this right here. be in our YouTube video. I'll zoom in on them. There we go. There we go. And uh, land is over there somewhere through the fog. On the other side is where we're going to have to paddle back to. But the tide will be going out. We'll have the wind at our back. And it should be a lot easier than it was to get here. We're going to camp here and have some lunch. This will be our little lunch spot. Yeah. And here's our lunch. We're having a little baguette with some carrot cake. And we have some olives and feta cheese. And we have some Mount Olive salami and provolone cheese here to make little sandwiches with. So there's my sandwich. And I'm going to put some of this olives and feta cheese on it with some of the oil there that they're in. It should be pretty tasty.
I think I'm going to climb up to the top of this sand dune and look over the other side. Yeah? Okay, here I go. I'll be right back. <sighs> Almost to the top. <sighs> well, I made it to the top of the sand dune. But all I see there's more sand dunes behind it. I do hear the ocean though. I think I could almost see it. Maybe if I walk this way a little bit. And I can definitely see the ocean from here. There is the ocean right over there. The flag up there. It would be a great place to fly the paraglider. Uh, great place to fly the paraglider on these sand dunes. It would be hard to get your paraglider out here. <sighs> Easy to get lost in these sand dunes too. But I know I came from that way and there's my tracks. So, okay, there's my boat down there, the yellow one. Stephanie's back here somewhere. <sighs> Oh, there she is over there. Stephanie, I see you. I'm almost back. The thing about descending a sand dune, what a lot of people don't know, is that when you're descending a sand dune, it's best not to be too careful. You don't want to pick and choose your way down the sand dune. You don't want to take small steps. You don't want to go slow. You just want to willy-nilly run down the sand dune as fast as you can. Like this. Just like that. a great place to take a nap in the sun. You can just take a nap right here. Okay, hold on. All right, so whenever you're ready, you go ahead and go. Tricky showed on. Alright, and uh, we're just letting the wind carry us away, carry us away from the shore here, and it'll pretty much blow us right back where we're going to, exactly. Don't even have to really paddle, but uh, we will a little bit, and uh, the tide and the wind should just carry us home, lickety split.
Tiffany's bravely paddling us towards the yellow boat. Okay, one, two, three. So the last thing you have to do after your kayaking trip before you get in the car is you have to deflate the boat. And I usually do this by laying on the boat and that helps get the air out of the boat. <laughs> well, we conquered Morro Bay. And now we're just packing the remains of our Explorer K2 kayak and making it ready for our next exciting adventure. <laughs> 